So the first part of our presentation focuses on senior year 101. This is all the things that your senior needs to know in order to graduate from high school and be prepared for whatever they wanna do after high school. We wanna start off by introducing our Glacier Peak Counseling Team. We're all divided alphabetically by last name. Tammy Amador works with students with the last names A through C-O-M, Amanda Hansen works with students with the last name C-O-N through H-A-S. Bree Weimer works with students with the last names Hat through McE. Ben Chertok works with students with the last names McF through R. And Danielle McHugh works with students with the last names S through Z. Tracy Hoyan is our counseling secretary. If you ever need to make an appointment with us or have questions, she's love, she'd love to help you. Um, Carrie Winkler is our college and career specialist. She's an amazing resource that helps our students when it comes to planning for what they want to do after high school. We want to take a minute to go over a few important dates. Last Friday, October 1st, we met with all seniors in the pack to talk about Senior Year 101. This Friday, we'll be meeting with them again during their civics classes to talk about financial aid and scholarships. Tonight, we're talking about both Senior Year 101 and financial aid and scholarships with all of you. And on October 12th from 5 to 7, we'll be offering a FAFSA workshop. So feel free to come by to get support filling out the FAFSA with your student. Glacier Peak counselors will also be meeting individually with every student. Starting the week of October 11th, we will be calling seniors out of class to meet one-on-one. -on -one. Here we will talk about graduation requirements, making sure students are on track, and also talking to them about their specific plan for after high school. To review the high school graduation requirements, we'll start with credits. Every student needs 24 out of 24 credits to graduate. These credits are divided into different categories like four years of English, three years of history, three years of math and science, and so on. Students also need eight hours of community service to complete a high school and beyond plan, which was shared with them last Friday on October 1st, and they need to meet a graduation pathway. Most students will meet a graduation pathway by passing the Smarter Balance Assessment for math and English, which will be offered at Glacier Peak this month. It's extremely important that all students attend and take this test. This is a picture of the final piece of the High School and Beyond plan. We've asked all students to complete this document and return it to us when we're back in the pack on October 8th. The remainder of the Senior Year 101 presentation will focus on this 12th grade timeline. As a counseling team, we put together this timeline in order to support students throughout their senior year. For the month of October, we want students to focus on which post-secondary option is the best fit for them. When we talk about post-secondary options, we mean applying to a four-year college, community college, technical school, an apprenticeship, or joining the military. All of these options are great options. We just want to make sure that every student is thinking about which one is the best fit for them. We also want to encourage students to start looking at applications to see what they need and when applications are due. Application deadlines start as early as November 1st, and the University of Washington, Seattle is due November 15th. So it's important to start looking now because that will come up very quickly. We want to make sure that students have enough time to gather the documentation they need, write essays, and ask for letters of recommendation if they're needed. We also want to encourage students to start um, viewing college essay topics and starting the writing process so that they have plenty of time to get feedback. The SAT and ACT. All four-year institutions in Washington State are test optional. Test optional means that students may choose to submit scores to strengthen their application, but at the same time, people who review applications are confident in reviewing an application without test scores and still making a fair decision. In other words, students without test scores are not at a disadvantage. It is important to consider if you're applying out of state, whether or not a school requires the SAT or ACT. So please check the individual school's website to see if that's a requirement for the application process. It's also important to think about the SAT and ACT when it comes to scholarships. For public four-year colleges in Washington, they will not be required for scholarships, but they will be required for some private school scholarships. So it's important to not only check the college's website to see if SAT or ACT is part of the application process, but also to see if it's part of the scholarship process. 
We just want to reiterate the importance of taking the Smarter Balance Assessment for English and Math this month. Most students will meet the graduation pathway of passing the Smarter Balance Assessment in order to graduate from high school, so it's important that everyone takes the test this month. The FAFSA will be covered in depth in the second part of our presentation, but we want to go over the basics here. The FAFSA is the Free Application for Federal Student Aid, and the WASFA is the Washington Application for State Financial Aid. Your student will only complete one of these applications. Most students will fill out the FAFSA, but the WASFA is for students who are not eligible for federal aid because of their immigration status, and this includes undocumented students. The FAFSA opened October 1st, and we encourage every student to complete it. A lot of students talk to us about not filling out the FAFSA because they feel they're not eligible for aid based on their parents' income, but we still encourage them to complete it. There are some scholarships that require the FAFSA to be completed in order to be eligible, so we encourage all students to complete the FAFSA. Glacier Peak requires that every senior completes eight hours of community service. Mr. May is the contact for all community service. The forms are available on the Glacier Peak website under the student tab. There's a community service webpage that has all the forms and all the information your student needs to get this requirement completed. A list of pre-approved organizations are listed on the site. And if your student's interested in doing their community service at an, for an organization that's not listed, they will want to complete a permission form before they begin logging their hours. Letters of recommendation. The first thing we want your student to think about is, do they need a letter of recommendation? Public institutions in Washington State do not require a letter of recommendation as part of the application process, but a lot of private schools do. Once your student determines whether or not they need a letter of recommendation, we want them to think about how many they need and do they need one from their counselor specifically. We ask that students complete the letter of recommendation request form, which they received a copy of last Friday, um, before they ask for a letter of recommendation. This really helps us write a letter that's specific to them and highlights their achievements in high school. They can make copies of this and give it to their teachers and other people they're asking for letters of recommendation as well. We also ask that letters of recommendation are requested at least two weeks before the application deadline. In the month of November, we really want students to focus on exploring all of the post-secondary options that they're interested in. They might do this by visiting a virtual national college fair like NACAC, or they might look at the individual school's website to see what kind of opportunities they have. A lot of colleges are now offering in-person options again, but they also have virtual options available if that's more comfortable. This is also a great opportunity if your student's looking at colleges out of state so that they can view them virtually if you're not able to travel there. Ms. Winkler also does an amazing job of bringing college representatives to our campus and posts about that daily in the bulletin. During Grizzly period and lunch, almost every day, there is a college representative available for your student to connect with. We also want students to start looking at the applications and starting to figure out what information they need for each school so that they're prepared for those early deadlines. We want to take a minute to talk about the different types of college applications. Every college admissions webpage will specify how they would like your student to apply to their college. Some colleges use common application, some use coalition, while others have a university specific application. During the application process, there will be a section about FERPA. We encourage students to waive FERPA because colleges ask that documents and letters uploaded are confidential. If you're applying to multiple schools on Common App, it can be easier to use Common App because everything is in the same place. If you're applying to one school that use com uses Common App, it may be easier to just use the school specific application. We also encourage students to look for help um, on the college's website. For example, the University of Washington provides webinars that take students step-by-step -step through the coalition application to support them with that process. You may be wondering, what else do I need to apply for college? You can request your transcript from Mrs. Winkler in the Career Center. Your GPA and class rank can be found on Skyward. If your college requires you to have an essay or a letter of recommendation, you will want to have that ready before you apply. Pay close attention to the deadlines and always make sure you're checking the university websites. Know your deadlines. 
Typically, early decisions are in two rounds, November 1st and January 1st, early action November 1st, regular admissions February 1st, and rolling admissions means that they review as they come rather than having a hard deadline. Check with each school's admissions page to see how they want your scores for SAT or ACT sent. Most schools will ask you to send scores directly from ACT or SAT. To send those, you can go to act.org or collegeboard.org for SAT scores. All of this information is found on our resources handout, and we also have links directly to all of the testing information on our website. A question that we get asked is how many schools should I apply to? We want you to really make sure that you're applying to schools that are meaningful to you. This means that you would actually want to attend that school. So the answer is gonna vary a lot from student to student. When applying to schools, you can think of them as reach, target, or safety schools. For a safety school, we like you to look at schools that have automatic entrance based on your median GPA. For example, WSU has assured admissions at a 3.6 or above GPA, and Central Washington University has an automatic entrance of 3.0 GPA and higher. A target school is a college that you have a reasonable chance of attending. This means that your statistics place you in the mid 50th percentile of admitted students. A REACH school is a school that you're maybe not likely to get into. This includes highly selective colleges and any colleges where your statistics place you in the bottom 25% of admitted students. The difference between early action and early decision can be a little bit confusing, so we're going to break it down. Early action means that you're applying to a school early and you're going to receive a decision well in advance of the institution's regular response date. Early action means that you've done some homework and you feel like the school could be a really good fit for you. Early action is non-binding. You will receive an early response to your application, but you do not have to commit to the college until the normal reply date of May 1st. Early decision is a binding process. Students make a commitment to a first choice institution where if they are admitted, they will definitely enroll and withdraw all other applications. If you apply to a school early decision and you're admitted, you're committing to attending that institution. So the big part to pay attention to is that early decision is a binding process. We again want to remind you to pay really close attention to your deadlines for college applications. Each school might be a little bit different. Submit your college applications before the deadline. Pay attention because if you need a letter of recommendation, you're going to want to request that at least two weeks in advance. If you're requesting a letter of recommendation from a counselor, we have sheets to fill out in advance to request the letter. December and January is a really great time to dive into the search for scholarships. The presentation following this will have a ton of information and go much more into detail on scholarships, so this is just a reminder to start your search in December and January. As we move into spring and looking at February and March, these are the items that you want to look at. One is to apply for community colleges and technical schools. Those can be really great options. They're affordable and many schools offer direct transfer. We have heard from UW that the best way to get in is to transfer from a community college. After your semester one grades are posted, many schools require mid-year transcripts. There's a few different ways that this can happen. You might be prompted by email to submit a mid-year transcript. If this happens, ask Ms. Winkler for a copy of your transcript. If you have submitted your application through Common App or Coalition, your counselor will update it for you. This is a great time to also apply for summer internships or apprenticeships. We will post opportunities in the bulletin and on our website. There's also a lot available if you do job searches on your own. If you are interested in joining the military or just exploring, you will want to take the ASVAB test. This stands for Armed Services Vocational Aptitude Battery Test. This test can be taken at a recruiting office or talk to Ms. Winkler in the Career Center. 
Usually students hear back from the colleges that they applied to in mid-March if they got in. There are a few things to think about when you're deciding what school is the best fit for you. The first is academics. Do they have what you want to study? Do they have supports like a tutoring center or disability services? What about the social aspects? Do you want a big school or a small school? Diversity, student groups. Do you want to be close to home or out of state? And think about if it's a city or a rural setting. Finances also play a big part in the decision making process you will receive a financial letter that really varies when it comes in from school to school. It will typically come in from mid-March all the way up until the decision date. This financial award letter will determine the actual cost of attending after financial awards and grants are taken into account. So what are your next steps after you've chosen a school? After you've decided, confirm your acceptance by submitting your enrollment verification and deposit by May 1st or your school's deadline. We're going to remind you again, pay really close attention to each school's deadlines. You will accept your financial aid award. You'll schedule advising and orientation appointments. And the college will communicate things that you need to do to get ready to attend. There'll be things like housing preferences, orientation, and picking classes. We do have a graduate handbook that goes over the next steps that you should do after we accepting. Again, keep track of your deadlines. Read through your acceptance letters completely and take notes of really important dates. In May, we just have some checklist items. Make sure that you submit your community service hours because this is required for graduation. You are also required to complete a senior exit survey. And on this survey, you will tell us where you want your final transcripts to be sent to. Also for testing, if you have AP classes, you'll take your AP test in May. Final transcripts will be ready by June 25th. Remember, in your senior exit survey, you will tell us which schools you want us to send your final transcripts to. If you've submitted your application through Common App or Coalition, your counselor will also submit it there. If you've ever done a college in the high school class or a running start class, then you will want to request transcripts from each of those schools to be sent to the school that you'll be attending. Our last slide is a reminder that you can start ordering your cap and gown. Jostens is our high school's official graduation supplier. You can find the link to order your cap and gown on the Glacier Peak website. This year, Jostens is giving the option to pick blue or white when ordering your cap and gown. Traditionally, if you have identified as female, then you would have received a white cap and gown and blue if you identify as male. This year, GP is allowing students to pick either color, so you can pick blue or white. 